its condition has been regressing. So it's more or less reached a point where the hearing aids have peaked in their ability to support and amplify and there's not much more they can do. So um, it'd be better to do the cochlear implant now when he's still young. His brain is more plastic. It can adapt. I think my hearing is going down gradually. Cochlear implant is something that I would only resort to if my hearing reached a point where hearing aids are no longer able to effectively help me hear. How do you feel? My family encouraged me to own for trainings and competitions. So I'm able to pursue my spot to the best of my implementers. What she wanted to do is also to achieve the podium in the Masters event. She always misses by one or two positions. This time around in November, we hope that she can achieve uh, the podium. I have been dancing for nine years. I feel dancing built up myself easier than fitting because dancing is more like freedom so you can do whatever you want so I do not have to worry about anything. I think my hearing is going down gradually. I have not had a hearing test for almost two years already, so it's probably time to go for another. End of 2016. Mm. From then, right, do you feel that there's any change in your hearing? I do feel that in generally in normal situations, I'm not able to hear as much. I have worked with a few musicians before. For Azariah, it's different because he's a performing musician as well. It's amazing how, you know, even though he has hearing loss, but yet his sensitivity to just one decibel change in the frequencies can make such a big impact. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's due to uh, hearing loss or whether that's due to Noise. just natural... I have four, four settings right now. Yeah, four so, programs. The mm -hmm. first one is the universal one, which you first will be in. First is the in. general speech setting. Yes. Second is music. And third is when you are? Third is when I'm in a concert. Listening? Yes. Okay. Or when I'm listening to a recording, Yeah. Okay. YouTube or... Okay, can. Mm. So the third one probably has a wider dynamic range. Okay, and when you're on fourth? Reverberant? Uh, in noisy environments. Uh. Right. I'm, I'm used to there are certain high frequency sounds or maybe low frequency sounds yeah. that doesn't seem quite right to him. Is it more piercing to you? So is it too metallic? Or could it be too boomy? So I had to ask more in-depth questions. Then uh, we will work out on okay whether do we need to change the parameters within this program or we need to add extra programs with different settings. And then it's up to him to change between the different programs for different listening situations. Yeah, so there are a few notes that I think one big thing that people may not realize about hearing aids is making a sound louder does not mean making it clearer. When hearing aids amplify sounds, we hear a louder version of what's being said, but it may not be clear. It may be like when you take a picture with very low resolution or a very blurred picture, yeah. and you zoom in, it's still going to be blurred. So what we as hearing impaired people do is we read the lips to help us understand what we are hearing. 
If I were to close my eyes now and try to understand what you're saying to me, I would only understand about half, maybe. The diagnosis was about four years old. We only found out one day when he listened to the phone and my wife was shouting at the top of her voice, but he was saying nothing. So that was when we decided to get him checked. After you get over the shock, the next thing is how do you handle the situation? So one of our beach therapists recommended that we go for a summer program in the States where you are immersed into how you handle a child with hearing impairment. It's a slightly different school of thought because you can either do sign or you use your hearing. So that particular school recommended that we go with training, you know, whatever hearing is left. Because of my hearing needs, I've always been trained to and gotten used to sitting in front and advocating for myself to sit in front. So that's been the same ever since primary school up to now. Probably advocating for myself, for my special needs, I think that has helped me to learn not to be ashamed in certain ways of my needs and to inform others about it. I think that's been a positive effect on me. Dylan doesn't seem to have any other learning difficulties or other areas of special needs. So I think that helped the fact that he could go to a mainstream school. Initially, we were yeah, worried that the other kids are just going to make fun or they're going to play with his aids. Worse still, try and pluck them out. But for now, I think he's doing well in school. Children are amazing. They are able to understand each other. The enunciation doesn't actually affect his communication with friends. I would say that initially, he being not so proactive in speaking, so it's a lot of non-verbal actions. But other than that, they don't really see him differently and they accepted the fact that sometimes he may not hear them. Dylan, in his way, has also blessed his class and probably his teachers also, insofar as him being a teaching aide, bringing awareness to his classroom giving the opportunity to his teachers to talk to his friends about his condition. Even though he doesn't realise it, he is giving back to his community very early on. Before we start, we right, we have to wait, OK? My ear not working. Your hearing you is sure? not working? What yeah. happened to them? Which one is not working? Not working anymore. The no, left no or battery. the right? AVT is basically auditory verbal therapy. What we're focusing on is firstly identifying that the child has a hearing loss, fitting them with an appropriate device to give them back that access to sound, and then helping them cope and develop that speech and language. E, e. <gasps> you heard it first! You get to feed the cat. Yay. It went away. <laughs> Who's going to go next? Me. Okay, you hold the coin and you listen for the sound. Listen. And whatever you hear, you repeat, okay? Usually what our goal is is to prepare them and equip them so that they are ready for primary school and so that they can enter the mainstream education. The focus is on not being too reliant on us, but the parents knowing what they need to do in order to help their child grow. He's a, a wonderful kid. He's got lots of opinions, a lot of expressive things to say and all that. But because what was going in was not so clear, what is coming out is also not very clear. So hopefully with the surgery, we can help his speech and language grow. For little kids with such big people standing over their heads, you know, the lights in the operating rooms, all those things, it is very frightening. Let's check the book. So we're hoping by doing those preparations, 
psychologically we're helping them reduce their anxiety. Oh, it's coming off. You take it off nicely. I want to... Mr. and Mrs. Lee, uh, I would like to follow up with you with regards to uh, Dylan's scans. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that if we do a cochlear implant, it will be all successful because uh, the nerves are intact. There has been a new development though. So we discovered a problem with uh, Dylan's left ear. In his middle ear, he seems to have a growth of tissue which appears to have uh, caused his hearing to have deteriorated further. So now that we've reached this stage, uh, the plan for his uh, surgery has to change. Mm. Pretty much just surgery to remove this uh, distinct mass of tissue. Right. Okay. okay. But what we're aiming for is to restore his hearing to the same performance as his other ear. Okay. So that's the main intent. Yeah? Yeah. Hearing restoration because the disease actually causes problems. So if we leave it unattended, it, it can actually grow bigger and consume more bone mass? Yeah, exactly. Area. Yeah, it will. Mm. This is not a cancer. This is local. This is entirely localised. We may need to get bigger exposure mm -hmm. and that's when we will need to uh, consider coming in from the outside using a different method where we drill bone. The first risk is there may be a permanent hole in the eardrum. I see. In the middle ear, there is also the facial nerve. The facial nerve is the nerve that controls facial movements. Uh, basically, if that is affected, then one side is paralysed mm. and is unable to move. Yeah. Okay. The second thing is, uh, we're talking about his inner ear function now. He can become deaf from the surgery itself. It took me a very long while to actually accept the fact that Dylan might have to do a cochlear surgery. And then now that we have to change that and knowing that he has this congenital disease, Dr. Barry has explained that, you know, with the removal of the cholesteatoma, he may be able to regain his previous levels of hearing. And if he can't, then we will have to then look into the future with cochlear then. I think it will be hard for me to make new friends because I am not suitable person. I am more of the introvert. So sometimes I will wait for others to approach me and I also need time to warm up to the person. I never did before. Because last time I got crush on someone but the person suddenly want to cut contact with me and I really don't know what's going on. Make me feel very good to take the button. He can see others, he will have to worry about him. He won't want to choose him or something. If he doesn't have a plan, he will have to be able to do it alone. I have parrot and two sisters. Two of us are in the middle. I am only one dad in my family. My family, mainly we speak in Mandarin. In a family setting, it's always Mandarin, so she always miss out on all the jokes and all that. Because like it's very natural to like speak in Mandarin, so we will have our conversation and then suddenly we were like, oops, she's around, we forgot. Then we will start to retell the stories, like what we were talking about, and then to like not make her feel left out. Uh, my family and I, 
are on good term, but sometimes I may not understand what is going on. I feel bad because I, I need my teacher to repeat what going on, everything, so I don't really ask. She said, mm, I don't understand what you're talking about because you are speaking in Mandarin. So might as well go back to my room, you know. Yeah, for us, we also actually feel bad that we haven't really, really tried our very best to communicate in English yet. Yeah, no, huh? You should help translate that. But okay, lah. Most of them. Okay. 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 我的英语不是很好啦，然后如果我要跟他解释一些更深刻的东西的时候，我会让我的大女儿或者小女儿来跟他沟通一下。他的爸爸是有一点不能接受他是失聪啦。We didn't learn sign language because um our dad doesn't like it. He discouraged us like Roseanne to sign as well. Last year. I was communicating well with my family. So my father said, why don't we take up a tardive course? Because he wants to bring family together. But it never happened. I'm not sure if they really want to learn. Maybe he just want to stay to like encourage me. <laughs> Most of the time, we don't really talk to each other. When we come home from work, then maybe just like, how's your day? But I realized that she doesn't really like speak to us about her feelings or emotions because um, there were times where I realized that like through Instagram or Facebook, I realized that actually she's feeling down. And then I will like maybe text her when I'm outside to ask her like, hey, what's going on? We must think of the function of hearing. It is one of the essential five senses that we have. When a person has hearing loss, he loses that ability to socially interact with much of his environment. It leads to us withdrawing within ourselves, withdrawing away from our community that's around us. It isolates us from mental engagement, it isolates us from emotional engagement and therefore we take away a very integral part of a person's life. Should I be alternative? Uh, alternative? Yeah, okay. Um, usually I always see her spending her time alone. She's quite a quiet and reserved person. On the surface, she looks like she doesn't have much of a problem, but I think it could be very hard for her to cope with studies, especially when she tells me that sometimes she doesn't understand what people are saying. So I feel that during class, she must have not understood some things. Initially, when I was settled into my new school, I had to get to know my classmates, and that was the hardest part. 
but I always had to introduce myself and let them know that after seeing the show. No, I didn't have fish in the first place. Oh. The last person brought me got the last fish. Oh. Generally, they are quite nice and not intimidating. But then, maybe a challenge will be trying to assimilate into social setting. Do you know her? Like, I'm, I've seen her around, but not personally. For example, in the conversation and I want to participate in it, everyone has to accommodate to me that they have to slow down their speech or give me some signals when they are going to speak. And then most people would not to do that because it's not very convenient for them to keep the conversation on. So I normally don't participate in those kind of conversations. It's hard to make friends. I think as parents, right, we would want our child to be able to integrate with society, with friends. Most of the time, she will be at home, you know, after school, doing her homework. My parents are the closest people in my life. What about the Most of the time, then I'm just complaining to my parents about it, then they give me more support, and then I feel better. Whenever she comes back to us and tells us about some of the issues she faces with social interaction, the first reaction I have is, why is the other person so not uh, sympathetic at all? You know, I feel like going to call up the friend and give the friend a piece of my mind, you know? So all I can do and all we can advise her is to try various means to make yourself clearer. And if you feel that the person may not have that much patience for you, um, it's okay. You just have to accept them as acquaintance probably. Then you look for people who are more patient, whom you can click better with and try to develop the friendship further. Of course, we hope eventually she will find her partner in life because we are not going to be around for very long. At least someone to take care of her is what I hope that she can have in the future. But of course, we are not giving her any pressure at all and we know it is difficult for her to find very close friends, uh, let alone a soulmate.